Okay, we should be live. We'll jump into development. Uh, first, we're trying to sort out all the links on the site. So if you haven't checked uh, bionicchaos.com, please go do so. There's many more tools coming up. Some of them already uh, doing something useful, but they were not formally published. So probably if you follow the live streams, you will have uh, links uh, for them. Otherwise, we need to polish them a little bit and then we'll get the uh, publish shortly. So we just, um, we have this Python code that actually generates the XML. XML should have all the links on the website. And there's quite a few, there's 90 of them. Only some of them are published. So we'll be updating those and then jumping into development. So we also can use the, uh, was it beautiful soup? To actually crawl the site and see uh, which links actually working and fetch short uh, the description from them and so we use this python code uh, let's run this quickly yeah well this one's running much longer because it's actually uh, crawling the site as well a fetching a, or trying to fetch a description from each page the question is it's still uh, writing the file now the other question is what happens if the description cannot be fetched so if the page is not actually loading or working or returning an error what happens in that case still doing something uh, we are Updating the fetch page description uh, with more error handling. So we're returning description if found, if not found, return no description available. That will also mean uh, the page is not there or something's wrong with it, like it's not accessible. We actually need to account for that don't need do we need xml extension um okay we have all this no description available that's not good as say cochlear model one's well, actually not a uh, not working okay now if the site is written Turning an error, can we place the error uh, with some description of the error into the description of the section of the XML file? That would be nice. Okay, so fetching description, we have GitHub Copilot updating this. Uh, let's run this again. Should actually see the um, error type in the XML so this one is still running you're just trying to sort out so yeah if you haven't checked the uh, bionicals.com please go do so you will be supporting the project that way uh, some of the pages so there is actually I don't know how many are published on the landing page but that's just a fraction of what we have uh, let's uh, count the uh, source. Yeah, we have 35, and the XML uh, shows about 90. Yeah. Uh, so, this is stuff that would be still a work in progress. No description available to knowledge graph. So, we have the knowledge graph working. This is one of those new. Um, tools that the more recent edition we want we wanted to polish it up a bit before we actually publish this so there should be more uh, videos of how we actually made this now here yeah, the problem we don't have description and a lot of the pa pages still 
return an error uh, 37 of them yeah, and those ones that we are working on at the moment so we'll be something on epilep epilepsy we're we'll trying another FDA AI it's essentially searching public uh, data set uh, chatbot uh, feed data we're trying to get data from one of those a uh, wearables a uh, it's uh, natively a garmin no not proprietary it's uh, essentially an open source for something that uh, we were doing as well i might actually jump into that one yeah so essentially what we will be doing on this channel is fixing those tools so currently what you see on the landing page is only what's available but if you go uh, a sitemap xml it will actually show everything we are working on we need to update this xml as well so we can delete the old one and sitemap updated just change the name uh, we're normally publishing the site uh, once a week with all the changes that happen yes these sessions meant to be interactive just have to check the chat yes that description there so say converts EG data into musical notes. Yes, we have a tool like that. I'm just trying to. Uh, that's interesting. Why do we have music? No description available. Why? Very sure. There should be a description for this one. And uh, there's different types of descriptions. So EG to music. Let's check it out for a sec. We're going templates index. Yeah, we do have a description. The question is uh, what's the difference between a regular description and OG description? OG is something used for. Uh, some pages only have the OG description. Is it a problem? And how can we fix a uh, description not appearing in the XML file generator? Yeah, because they definitely have a description. I think it's just not picking up on it. Using beautiful soup for passing the HTML. And uh, GitHub Copilot is updating the fetch page description for us to also look at the OG description as well as the regular one. Um, so let's run this again. It might take a while because it's actually passing all the links on the site. If you have any questions, comments, or complaints about bionicchaos.com this is a good time to uh, put them in the comment i'll try to address them all just pin that message to the chat just in case let's check the updated sitemap okay this is better we now have a more descriptions available cross coherence okay it's not very good description and we're still getting a lot of errors actually can we go uh, to this tool might use uh, more description involvement that's something we would like to actually concentrate more on fix it up a bit to actually check that it's uh, looking okay on mobile should we go for this one let me know what you think 
right so we have the last modified date which is nice it's sorted by the last modified date as well the xml now this one haven't been published yet we'll publish it uh, um, later on to remember what that neurovisual was it's like a odd name inverse f noise synthetic noise generator is a web application that generates static noise signals okay what else we've got this one's returning an error yeah this one loading for some time so if i hit f5 it takes some time for it to load yeah this is thanks to plotly.js maybe i should uh, modify it into charts js i don't know if it's quicker let me know what you think which one are we jumping into today eg hardware this one actually is working it doesn't have a description yeah i know there's a lot of people interested in that originally was uh, using national instruments gear to record eg yes it needs a pre-amplifier uh, which we didn't have they can actually use a sound amplifier could research a bit into this one uh, or just tell uh, ChatGPT to do this uh, for us it's called eg hardware it just has the one html it doesn't have much interesting that gpt4 can probably not even do the most basic task but then it's amazing on other things so just have to be careful how you use it so if we ask it to just uh, can you just uh, copy paste the above text that's because i want to use a text-to-speech uh, fun function that you have do you know you have a text-to-speech function yes it's not really good at answering questions about itself and sometimes it's just ignoring a uh, basic uh, instructions it's actually doing good so far or not yeah no it's uh, <laughs> i just asked to copy this but it's, uh, here's the text i don't know data acquisition software like, uh, software integration yeah that's correct just sample tested obviously i don't know why didn't do the references did it no it's actually no it's actually did do them just read this out loud because i'm already losing my voice and then we prompt it from there certainly here's the text Crafting an EEG recording system with NIUSB 6215 and open source tools. NIUSB 6215 for EEG recording, an overview. Recording EEG, electroencephalogram data, can be a complex undertaking, given the delicate nature of the signals involved. In this technical exploration, we'll discuss how you might employ an NIUSB 6215 multifunction DAC-Q device to record EEG data the additional hardware required, and the possibilities surrounding open source amplifiers for such a setup. The additional hardware puzzle. EEG signals are typically in the order of microvolts, and as such, they require amplification and filtering before they can be effectively sampled by devices like the USB 6215. To capture EEG with the USB 6215, you would need EEG electrodes, shielded cables, amplifiers, power supplies and safety features, data acquisition software, Amplification options, YNA333 is a star. When seeking out amplifiers for EEG systems, the INA333 instrumentation amplifier stands out as an exemplary choice due to its low noise, high input impedance, and excellent CMRR. These features help in maintaining the signal's integrity from source to DAQ. Designing with INA333, the do-it-yourself route. If you're up for the challenge, designing a custom PCB around the INA333 offers a deep dive into electronics design. With software tools such as KiCad or EasyEDA, and services for PCB manufacturing readily available, creating a dedicated amplifier for EEG purposes becomes an attainable project. 
Here's a simplified step-by-step -step approach for designing an EEG amplifier with INA333. One, gather components. Two, design the circuit three, prototype. Four, validate safety and compliance. Five, manufacture the PCB. Six, software integration, open source EEG, beyond the norm. While OpenBCI is often the go-to for open source EEG solutions, the field is ripe with potential for those willing to venture beyond the beaten path. From the academic halls to the maker's bench, Alternative open source projects do exist, though they require a more hands-on approach to integrate into a coherent system. Final thoughts. The journey from brainwave to byte is not a simple one. Integrating components like the INA333 into a DAQ system like the NIUSB6215 requires not just technical know-how, but also a flair for innovation and problem solving. With the rise of open source hardware and software, the barriers to entry for EEG research and hobbyist exploration are lower than ever, paving the way for new discoveries and advancements in the field. References and further reading. NIUSB 6215 Specifications. Official Technical Specifications for the NIUSB 6215. INA 333 Precision Amplifier. Texas Instruments Official Page for the INA 333 Instrumentation Amplifier. OpenBCI, OpenBCI official website for open source brain computer interface technology. SparkFun Tutorials, a resource for learning about electronics design, including working with PCBs and amplifiers. EEG Signal Acquisition, Methodology and Application, a research paper providing insight into EEG signal acquisition methods and applications. Arduino, a platform for building digital devices and interactive objects that can sense and control the physical world. Easy EDA, a free, zero-install, cloud-based EDA tool which enables hardware engineers to design, simulate, share publicly and privately, and discuss schematics, simulations, and printed circuit boards. Frontiers in Neuroscience, the application of EEG in brain-computer interface technology, an article discussing the advanced applications of EEG within the field of brain-computer interfaces. Hey, okay, what are we doing? Yeah, we need all the pages to look roughly the same. What that we have, and let's actually search for the HTML files. Should also, oh, we have too many of those. 268, what? 168, that's, sounds better. 78 okay this is odd so some folders don't even have a html hey that's not cool to format this document we we'll need body twice in it go site a xml sitemap i told the yeah i have 37 errors and that's not cool sure we had something for the gate analysis don't even know where to start yeah brain 3d is what we're gonna go for because it used to work it was actually quite promising uh, but then we did something that broke it So that sounds good. I will open another a uh, Visual Studio Code with Brain 3D project in it. Keep it there for a while, but we can a uh, quickly we can quickly fix the EEG hardware. EEG hardware. Hey, can you write additional paragraph for the text describing what pre-amplifiers can be used? Particularly touch on the use of um, cheaper audio pre-amplifiers. And uh, if it's okay or not to use them instead of uh, medical grade ones. Let's do that additional paragraph. In the meantime, I'm gonna find 
a good header it might be a better header change the title we already have viewport should be in the beginning yes we want to monetize i don't like this particularly focus on an i game we might uh, make the article more generic where did you get that description for from a uh, right that's better let's read that one quickly certainly here's the additional paragraph pre-amplifiers exploring budget-friendly options when considering pre-amplifiers for EEG recording, it's important to note the critical role they play in preserving the integrity of the delicate microvolt signals before further amplification and digitization. While medical grade pre-amplifiers are specifically designed to meet stringent standards for low noise and high precision, some researchers and hobbyists may explore the use of cheaper audio pre-amplifiers as an alternative. Audio pre-amplifiers commonly used in consumer electronics, can offer cost-effective solutions. However, they may not always meet the stringent requirements necessary for high-fidelity EEG signal processing. The primary concerns with using audio preamplifiers include higher noise levels, lower input impedance, and inadequate common mode rejection ratio, CMRR, all of which can degrade the quality of EEG data. Thus, while audio preamplifiers might be suitable for preliminary experiments or educational purposes, transitioning to medical grade preamplifiers is recommended for serious research and clinical applications to ensure data accuracy and reliability. Okay, but are there any advantages of uh, using uh, audio amplifier uh, instead of medical grade? Uh, can you rewrite the paragraph? we're trying to bias it as well aren't we that's okay that's most articles <laughs> we do have an agenda certainly here's the revised paragraph highlighting both the advantages and disadvantages of using audio preamplifiers compared to medical grade ones preamplifiers exploring budget-friendly options when considering preamplifiers for EEG recording, it's important to recognize the crucial role they play in preserving the integrity of the delicate microvolt signals before further amplification and digitization. While medical grade preamplifiers are designed to meet stringent standards for low noise, high precision, and high input impedance, some researchers and hobbyists may explore the use of cheaper audio preamplifiers as an alternative. Audio preamplifiers, commonly used in consumer electronics, can offer several advantages, including cost effectiveness, easy availability, and simplicity of integration. These attributes make them appealing for preliminary experiments, educational purposes, or projects with budget constraints. However, audio preamplifiers may not always meet the rigorous requirements necessary for high fidelity EEG signal processing. The primary concerns include higher noise levels, lower input impedance, and inadequate common mode rejection ratio, CMRR, which can degrade EEG data quality. Therefore, while audio preamplifiers can be a viable option for initial trials or non-critical applications, transitioning to medical grade preamplifiers is recommended for serious research and clinical use to ensure the accuracy and reliability of EEG data. Hey, okay, is this article specific about a certain hardware? Hey, we would like to make it more generic and give that uh, hardware example as a single example, but not uh, the main focus of the article. Certainly. Here's a more generic version of the article with the NIUSB 6215 used as a single example rather than the main focus. Crafting an EEG recording system with open source tools. Overview of EEG recording. Recording EEG, electroencephalogram data can be a complex undertaking, given the delicate nature of the signals involved. In this technical exploration, we'll discuss how to set up an EEG recording system using a variety of data acquisition DAQ devices, the additional hardware required, and the possibilities surrounding open source amplifiers for such a setup. We'll also touch on the use of specific hardware, such as the NI-USB 6215 multifunction DAQ device, as an example. 
The additional hardware puzzle, EEG signals are typically in the order of microvolts, and as such, they require amplification and filtering before they can be effectively sampled by DACU devices. To capture EEG, you would need EEG electrodes, shielded cables, amplifiers, power supplies and safety features, data acquisition software, amplification options, why INA333 is a star. When seeking out amplifiers for EEG systems, the INA333 instrumentation amplifier stands out as an exemplary choice due to its low noise, high input impedance, and excellent CMRR. These features help in maintaining the signal's integrity from source to DAT queue. The INA333 can be used to design custom amplifiers that are cost-effective and high-performing. Designing with INA333, the do-it-yourself if you're up for the challenge, designing a custom PCB around the INA333 offers a deep dive into electronics design. With software tools such as KiCad or EasyEDA and services for PCB manufacturing readily available, creating a dedicated amplifier for EEG purposes becomes an attainable project. Here's a simplified step-by-step -step approach for designing an EEG amplifier with INA333. One, gather components. Two, design the circuit. Three, prototype for validate safety and compliance. Five, manufacture the PCB. Six, software integration. Pre-amplifiers, exploring budget-friendly options. When considering pre-amplifiers for EEG recording, it's important to recognize the crucial role they play in preserving the integrity of the delicate microvolt signals before further amplification and digitization. While medical-grade pre-amplifiers are designed to meet stringent standards for low noise, high precision, and high input impedance, some researchers and hobbyists may explore the use of cheaper audio pre-amplifiers as an alternative. Audio pre-amplifiers, commonly used in consumer electronics, can offer several advantages, including cost-effectiveness, easy availability, and simplicity of integration. These attributes make them appealing for preliminary experiments, educational purposes, or projects with budget constraints. Here are some sections that can be expanded upon to provide more detailed information. One, overview of EEG recording. Explain the basics of EEG and its applications in research, medical diagnostics, and brain-computer interfaces. Detail the challenges associated with EEG signal acquisition and the importance of high-quality data. Two, the additional hardware puzzle. Provide a more detailed description of EEG electrodes, their types, e.g. dry versus wet electrodes, and placement on the scalp. Explain the role of shielded cables in reducing electromagnetic interference. Discuss different types of amplifiers, e.g. instrumentation amplifiers, differential amplifiers, and their specific advantages. Highlight the importance of power supplies and safety features to prevent electrical hazards during EEG recording. Offer more information on data acquisition software, including examples of both proprietary and open source options. Three, amplification options. Why INA333 is a star. Provide a deeper technical analysis of the INA333, including its electrical specifications, noise performance, and typical applications in EEG systems. Compare the INA333 with other popular instrumentation amplifiers used in EEG recording to highlight its strengths and potential weaknesses. For designing with INA333, the do-it-yourself route. Expand on the process of designing the circuit, including detailed schematics, component selection, and layout considerations. Include tips for prototyping and testing the amplifier circuit to ensure it meets the required performance standards. Discuss regulatory and safety compliance for DIY EEG equipment especially for use in human subjects. Five, pre-amplifiers. Exploring budget-friendly options. Offer specific examples of audio pre-amplifiers that have been used successfully in EEG projects. Include case studies or testimonials from researchers or hobbyists who have used audio pre-amplifiers. Discuss modifications or additional circuitry that might be needed to make audio pre-amplifiers more suitable for EEG recording. Six, Data acquisition devices. Versatile options. Provide a broader overview of different DAC devices suitable for EEG recording, including both specialized EEG hardware and general purpose DAC. Compare the NIUSB 6215 with other DAC devices in terms of features, performance, and cost. Include information on software compatibility and integration with different DAC devices, highlighting ease of use and flexibility. Open source EEG, beyond the norm, 
explore alternative open source EEG projects and platforms beyond OpenBCI. Discuss the benefits and challenges of using open source hardware and software for EEG research. Include examples of successful open source EEG projects and their impact on the field. Eight, final thoughts. Reflect on the future of EEG technology and its potential impact on neuroscience and brain-computer interface development. Discuss emerging trends and innovations in EEG recording, such as wireless EEG systems and wearable devices. Offer advice for beginners looking to start their own EEG projects, including resources for learning and community support. Each of these sections can be expanded to provide a more comprehensive guide to setting up an EEG recording system, catering to both beginners and experienced users in the field. It stuffed up some of the applications. This has a different title, so this can definitely go. This, uh, is that fee for six? No, same thing. Why did it remove? KCAD? Yeah, I want to keep KCAD. Yeah, the website is up and running well. Yeah, GPT-4 used to hallucinate uh, references. Now, uh, can you find any relevant uh, scientific research references? Uh, even better if they could be in clinical literature. Uh, the links don't actually work. High quality recording of bioelectric events. Okay. It's not the uh, open access, is it? IEEE probably would not be open access as well. Let's check that the name of the paper analog design for low noise EG system. No. So it's. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. Impedance characterization. Okay, that's relevant. Yeah, hallucinating. Uh, uh, some of the links do not work. Uh, some of the links link to a different paper uh, that has a different title to what uh, you specified in last response. Uh, can you fix that and perhaps uh, just provide the raw uh, links text? that I can uh, use directly. A neurophysiologic basis of EEG, 2006. A clinical neurophysiology is behind a paywall, is it? Yeah, it doesn't even tell you uh, what the price of the paper. The, no, we are not going to be purchasing, but it's good to know it's actually generated. Correct the name for the paper. Assessment of digital. Yeah, we don't have the full text. This paper is from 1997. Ah, it is this uh, open access. Yeah, it might be American Clinical Neurophysiology Society retired. Did they change the name or something? High quality recording bioelectric events. Yeah, 40 euros. I run my whole uh, website operation for, for less than that. High quality recording of bioelectric events. Analog design for low noise EG systems. Now oh, that's giving it wrong. Impedance characterization. No, oh, wrong, wrong. Data acquisition devices. Not found. It's amazing how it's. Yeah, so archive. This link should work. Oops, wrong. Does this paper even exist? in the uh, archive it does so why did you give me a wrong link to it o2438 gave me o2431 <laughs> it was close can you just have the html for it don't want to download anything schematic of direct Adapter between electrodes and amplifier. Okay, not interested in that. It's engineering heavy, isn't it? Might be too heavy for us, even though we like engineering, but uh, we do want the uh, more general stuff. And this is from 2016, so it might be a bit outdated. 
It's just something that came up uh, quickly. Uh, we would like to explore explainable AI and particularly why is it uh, not going to be the new hot topic? Uh, mainly to do with the fact that by explaining AI algorithms, they become a boring and they become simple again and they essentially turned into old school uh, machine learning or even uh, fuzzy logic algorithms so for example when you convert your fancy neural network into something like fuzzy logic fuzzy logic then you simplify it and it can be easily explained but then you turn it into something that existed uh, for many, many years. Just want to keep the transcribing fuzzy logic into physiologic, which can make sense, but that's not what I meant. Just go with this one, see what the current AI can do. Can ChatGPT be turned into a fuzzy logic algorithm? I don't think so. Okay, also, can you touch on uh, the question of if ChatGPT and a large language model can be turned into a fuzzy logic algorithm? To fix the just read that one out loud. You've touched on a complex and fascinating topic within the field of AI. The balance between the explainability and sophistication of models, especially as they relate to neural networks and more traditional forms of machine learning like fuzzy logic. Explainable AI, XAI, has emerged as an essential field due to the increasing deployment of AI systems in critical areas such as healthcare, finance, and law enforcement, where understanding the reasoning behind decisions made by AI is crucial. However, there's a valid concern you highlighted about the potential simplification of AI when these models are made explainable. Challenges of simplification. One, loss of nuance. Complex neural networks can capture subtleties in large data sets that simpler models might overlook. When these networks are distilled into simpler, more explainable models, there's a risk that this nuanced understanding is lost potentially leading to less accurate predictions. Two, trade-off between performance and explainability. There is often a trade-off between how explainable a model is and how well it performs. More complex models like deep learning networks often perform better at tasks involving high dimensional data, but are less interpretable. Making these models explainable can involve reducing their complexity, which can degrade performance. Three, reversion to older techniques. As you mentioned, by converting advanced AI models into formats like fuzzy logic, we essentially revert to using older and simpler techniques. While these are more understandable, they may not utilize the advancements in computational techniques and algorithms developed over recent years. Why explainable AI is still critical. Despite these challenges, explainable AI continues to grow in importance for several reasons. Accountability and transparency. In many applications, it's crucial to be able to audit and verify the decisions made by AI systems to ensure they are fair and unbiased. Trust. Users are more likely to trust an AI system if its decisions can be explained in human understandable terms. This is particularly important in fields like medicine or autonomous vehicles, where decisions can have significant consequences. Regulatory compliance. In many jurisdictions, regulations require decisions made by AI systems to be explainable to ensure they comply with legal standards. Future directions. The future of XAI likely involves developing new methods that retain the complexity and performance of advanced models while improving their interpretability. Techniques like feature importance, model agnostic methods, and the use of auxiliary models to explain primary models are areas of active research. Additionally, there might be a hybrid approach where complex models are used for performance, while simpler, explainable models are used to provide insights into how decisions are being made. The idea that making AI explainable 
simply turns it back into old school machine learning is a compelling point. It highlights the need for innovative approaches to develop AI systems that are both powerful and understandable. This ongoing tension between complexity and clarity is what makes the field of AI both challenging and exciting. This is the last uh, tool that we published. Uh, we have a couple of new ones that we will be publishing soon. They're really available. So if you're watching this stream, you already know about it. So I have some uh, nice uh, games that uh, uh, can be just uh, viewed continuously on the screen. I might need some uh, more interesting a uh, preset uh, like this. So essentially those will be like incubators of uh, water. And all of this will be able to generate it's like an a incubator. It's going again. Also I have this uh, I wouldn't be able to pronounce the name but we have uh, quite a few new applications. Let's go check them check them out. You'll be supporting the project that way.